and welcome back to Shabby Pug Yarn Podcast. Uh, if you're a new viewer, welcome and glad you find, found me here. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. Uh, it has been an unintentional hiatus for me. So this is the first episode in a month and it almost felt like I couldn't be able to record today either uh, because it feels like it has been so long so what can I talk about and it feels a little bit awkward but I figured if I just do it and get back to my schedule uh, maybe it will be easier again. Uh, so today I'm inside since it's raining outside. Uh, the dogs and I have been out for a walk and now they're just sleeping so the pug is sleeping here and the bulldog is next to him. Uh, I hope their snoring won't be too loud uh, so I can record and you can enjoy it without the disturbing sounds from the dogs. Uh, so yeah, it has been one month. Uh, that's quite crazy, but I have been up to quite a lot of things and uh, I hope you will enjoy some of the things that I will show you. Uh, so yeah, maybe I should just start with the finished objects. Uh, I have three objects you have seen before that are now finished and one project that I have started and finished within this month that I haven't been recording. But we can start with uh, one of my proudest FOs, finished objects, which is my Merlot show. Uh, it is finished and it's longer than my wingspan. As you can see, I still have these ends. So yeah, it's a really really amazing shawl. Uh, it's a crescent, uh, a quite narrow, like it's not very deep here, but it's very long so you can wrap it many uh, many many times around your neck if you want to. Uh, and the lace border at the end is really really nice too. Uh, this I have blocked and I fig figure out it worked quite well. Uh, so the yarn in this is uh, it's one variegated or what I should say yeah variegated uh, it's uh, Lanitium X Machina which is uh, a Finnish dyer which is this multicolored thing and then I have these eyelet sections and that's uh, leading men fiber arts and also the lace border. So I managed with one skein of each and I still have some left. So at least some blanket squares or maybe uh, using as minis in some other project I'm not sure yet. But the colors are matching perfect and the colors work really well for me. I haven't really figured out how to wear it. I mostly use it like this because that's how I'm most comfortable uh, using shawls. Uh, I often get cold in the neck uh, if it's uh, like if I'm sitting where it's air conditioned and it's blowing in the neck, or if I'm driving the car, for example. Uh, so, yeah. Really, really nice. My fiance has uh, named this the best show I have ever knit, so it's a really good, good grading. <laughs> I'm really, really pleased. I I can see myself use it quite a lot later uh, in the autumn because now in the middle of summer it's not uh, that much use of it. And maybe I should show you. Uh, because I have another shawl that I finished. Uh, this one is not, not blocked yet, uh, but there's 
Uh, there has been a mystery knit along uh, from uh, Marioner. Uh, she's on Instagram and has a Facebook group, and she designs in mostly in Norwegian. This pattern was in Norwegian anyway. So uh, it was a mystery shawl, and here is mine. So it's. Uh, a garter triangle and two different kind of lace uh, and I chose to knit this in Arvetta so it's Arvetta extra fine merino and one skein of Arvetta classic the difference is that the classic one has nylon in it so this is knitted on 3 mm and 2.5 mm needles it's uh, a good good size good length on on it uh, so it's really really nice and I do like this with all my shawls uh, something like this uh, this I haven't blocked yet so there's like an eyelet uh, out on the end that isn't showing up properly uh, but I have made up my blocking space so I will probably block it today and take some proper photographs I haven't taken photographs on finished objects in a long time it's almost embarrassing but uh, the Arvetta yarn is really squishy to knit shawls in uh, actually it was my friend uh, and swap uh, partner we are a swap partner, uh, Denise. I have been exchanging packages with her before, and I talked about knitting socks in Arvetta, and she said it's really, really lovely to knit shawls in. So that's why I got the idea to try it for this mystery one. So yeah, it was really, really nice. Uh, what I have been thinking about is if I had known, like, if I had the whole pattern from the beginning. I would have knitted uh, a purple triangle in the top and then had the green at the lace section but the colors are really nice anyway so it will be a shawl from me and then I have socks two pairs actually so I have been quite good uh, one of them is the monkey socks it's a cookie a pattern this is the original one uh, with the pearls there's also a version if you hate pearling there's a version called no pearl monkeys but this is the original one uh, and the yarn is a homespun house uh, i believe this is bucken I'm not sure, but the, the colorway is this is Halloween, so I have two, but just one on the, the sock blocker, uh, and it fits uh, really well. I have I made some adjustments for the cookie a pattern. Uh, <laughs> I just have to pet the bulldog so he doesn't snore that loud, uh, because uh, the pattern was a little bit too tight for me, uh, but the yarn. I felt like uh, the fabric I wanted to have with the yarn uh, made it necessary to use quite small needles. Uh, I don't remember if it was 2.25. I usually knit with 2.25 with socks. Uh, but the stitch count around uh, wasn't working out and then I found that you could buy uh, like a bigger size. But the problem was that the bigger size was too big, far too big. So then I decided to alter uh, the width and the height, so I redrew uh, like the chart. So I got a size in between the sizes she had in in the description. And my alteration works really well. So one pair of pinkish speckly purpley socks. And then, of course, my fiancé can't go without socks. He will, he 
he always steals the socks and now I made a pair just for him so here is my uh, Where's Waldo? I have named them on the Revelry page uh, so this is just a, a vanilla sock I I tried out the uh, thumb joint top hat heel from the sock architecture book it's an afterthought heel with more room if you have a high arc like both me and my fiance do so I don't know if you can see it's like a circular uh, decrease uh, thing you you count based on the uh, some measurements so and it's like the top of a hat gets I guess that's why it's named uh, thumb joint top hat heel yeah um, anyway the yarn is uh, this put into dyes this colorway is called Mr. Wrong and that's the white and red stripe and a mini for heels and toes. Uh, my fiance doesn't like the leg to be too long, so I made them quite short. Uh, and what I figured I will do next time, because I have another skein of uh, despondent dice, is that I'm not going to use... Uh, for this I have uh, one description for a long wedge toe. And I'm thinking about doing a medium or maybe short uh, wedge so, so I get less of uh, the color here and use more of it up in the cuff. But he wanted a really small cuff so for him it works out great. But uh, I'm planning to use the other one uh, for myself. Uh, the colors are really really good and I love the feeling of this yarn. So it's the sock yarn. I think it's a free ply if I'm not uh, remembering wrong. So yeah, that's two pairs of socks. And this is really good because now I have finished four projects uh, and it's good for my Javi Elskade Logistik, the challenge uh, with no yarn buying or only buying for one project when finishing three projects. So now I earned myself one more treat if I want to, but I have been saving up my treats and try to shop from Stash. Uh, now I, ha I have um, shown all of the finished objects and I can move along to my whips, which are all new and improved, uh, or at least they are new to you. So I have one that I have been working on almost a month. I'm I have joined uh, uh, not joined but I bought this collection of knits. Oh, he is so darn cute. He's lying on his back and snoring. Um. I bought this collection uh, of shawls that gets released uh, throughout the year. So the first one was early in the spring and now one in the middle of the summer and then one in the autumn and one for the winter. I believe it's four. Yeah. Uh, so it's called Wanderlust Knits. It's from uh, Janina Kalio. She's a Finnish designer. And this is the second installment. Uh, that I had to get the yarn. So this is the shawl called Desert Rain. Now I'm in the middle of a row. Like all podcasters that show up things, I'm in the middle. So yeah, you can see half of it. Uh, so it's a quite simple design, but it's really, really elegant because of its simplicity. It's eyelets and garter stitch and I have loved to have this with me uh, to work and when I'm running around like crazy it's really nice to just have this pick it up and knit it because the construction is easier to memorize so you can just knit on. The special thing that when you use I feel like when you have this 
patterning that is quite simple. You can have more more experiment with different kinds of yarn. So the yarn for this is the same as she designed. Uh, it's from snail yarn. Uh, it's a dye I have dye bought, bought yarn from before. My dugler is uh, one piece of it is a snail yarn. This is the yarn I have left. So it's silk linen is the base and it's uh, the colorway cloudy sky. So it's grays and blues. And silk linen is, let's see, it's 50% baby alpaca, 25% silk and 25% linen. So alpaca, silk and linen. And this is uh, the ball band. Uh, and snail yarn is placed in Italy. And she makes really really nice yarns. So this is cloudy sky and I have never knit with linen even though this is just 25% linen, it's, you can feel that it is linen in it and it's it gets a really gorgeous grape and I have I'm in the last repeat so this will hopefully be a finished object by the next time I record and I can't wait to wash and block it to see how the yarn behaves so this project has been really delicious and really fulfilling for me and I can't wait to finish it and I have it in my new bag which I'm also madly in love with with I don't know llamas alpacas I can't really tell but it's really really awesome it's uh, great with this pom-pom on the end so that's where I keep my work knitting. <clears throat> Even though it's raining, it's really, really hot, so I get thirsty all the time. And then I have a project that was almost knit in a weekend. It's not finished, but um, more than like the first weekend that I didn't record. So more than a month ago, I told before that I was going away for a knitting weekend with my Norwegian knitting friends. And we had a weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, or half of Friday, Saturday and half of Sunday at least. That we were just, we were just eating good food and knitted and had a really, really nice time. Uh, and I brought my... Uh, fort uh, sweater for my fiance uh, because I needed to knit on it. I didn't knit on it because I decided if you're knitting with your friends for a whole weekend, uh, you need to have something fun and you need a cast on something new. So I decided to cast on uh, a baby sweater called Baby Fleece uh, by. Pinneguri, she's a Norwegian designer, and here is how far I have gotten. So it's knitted top down, uh, but it's a provisional cast on. Let me hide all the ends. It's a provisional cast on, so I'm going to knit some ribbing at the top, the last thing I do. So it's a very, very colorful border. And then these fleece all over the body and some color work down at the bottom. And then if you can see these weird things in the middle, it's uh, the sticking stitches. So I cast it on and on Friday evening and knitted the whole body. And then on Sunday evening I knitted the first sleeve and then it has been lying in the bag. So it needs one arm, ribbing and sticking and bottom bands. So it's almost finished, but it has been lying, uh, lying in its project bag for almost a month. I hope that I will find some reason soon to just finish it, because it's not much knitting left. It's a quick thing to do. 
So here is a close-up on all the colors. So it's a really nice blue, uh, a honey mustardy yellow, a purple and a lime green and a hot pink and this beige gray thing. Really, really nice. So uh, the the knitting is quite nice. It is easy to use uh, or easy to to just follow along. Uh, but the problem I found was it was uh, quite a lot of pattern pages to have at the same time because I needed the direction that was at one, and then you needed some one diagram that was in another page and the diagram from another page. But I laid them out on the table and I just knitted along for a whole weekend and it went really really good. So this will hopefully be a finished object if not too long. It's knitted on 3mm needles and I'm using Roma Finol. I'm thinking about knitting something for myself in uh, the Roma Finol yarn. It's a Norwegian yarn uh, but I'm not sure if it's uh, how sensitive I am to rougher fibers. I can use my Icelandic sweater next to my skin and I'm not sure how this will be. Uh, so my plan was knit a sweater first, a baby sweater, and try it and see how you like it and then you can think about, like feel it when it's washed, because I think it will be a lot softer when you wash it and see how it behaves and maybe then knit something for me. So that's it was a really nice and fun project, but then have been having a hiatus in my gorgeous bag. Uh, so I hope I can take it out soon again and actually finish it. But now I have too many new and fun things to do, so uh, we will see when it will be its time for finishing. And of course I have another pair of socks on the needles, uh, because you can't be without socks on the needles. I found a pattern called uh, Dillsborough, and this is how far I have gotten, so I am working on the heel flap at the moment. So it's some kind of, uh, yeah, it's twisted stitches and slipped stitches that gets this structure. I think it would be more visible when I'm block when I have blocked it. So I'm working on the heel flap at the moment. And I'm knitting it with my Haya Haya Sharps 2.25, my favorite favorite size for socks. And I'm using my birthday gift, uh, the sock blank. Uh, the sock blank I got from my Norwegian knitting friends. This is the wool barn and the colorway is called blueberry. So it's right up my alley in the colors. Blacks and blues and pale purples. So I really really like it. And I can't wait to knit more on these socks. I. I'm really glad that actually this uh, this one fits me. It has the pattern had three different sizes, so it's uh, a lot easier to to choose when you can like pick from three sizes. Then it's the socks is in one size, and then I have to redo or recount all the things. And I have this awesome little let's see a little mustache there. Yeah to mark my side. Uh, I got the little mustache from uh, Tante, Tante Ull. Uh, she makes progress keepers and knitting markers, so I'm using it for, for the sock. So this is the first sock. Um, I do like to alternate between knitting two at a time and knitting one. Uh, depending a little bit on what type of sock and if I have knitted the pattern before or not and that kind of thing. So 
This one is one at a time, so I'm halfway on my first sock. And then I have two quite new customs that I have been working on uh, quite a lot, at least. So the first one is called Gulfos Buxe. Let's see how I can show it in this way. Maybe this way. So it's uh, a baby pant with some good ribbing at the top and it has this uh, braid on each side. So I have knitted two... Uh, what do you say? Like to where, where do you split for the legs? Skrit <laughs> in Swedish or Norwegian. Uh, uh, Norwegian. Uh, so I have split it up for two legs and I'm knitting on the first leg still. So this is uh, a Norwegian design, but I believe the description for it is in English too. So it's one braid on either side. And I'm using a Norwegian yarn uh, from Sannes called Tin Merino. So it's a Finn Merino. I believe it's like 27 stitches to uh, 10 centimeters or 4 inches and I'm knitting it on 3 millimeter uh, carbons. I'm doing magic loop. I just didn't have any spare yarn or <laughs> any spare cables so I uh, the leg I'm not knitting on is on some random bamboo needles I found. So yeah, I'm I believe I'm halfway on the first, a little bit more halfway for on the first leg. Uh, so yeah, I can show you how the yarn looks. It's a lovely brown color and here is how the label looks. It's uh, in Norwegian. So yeah, that's a really nice project that I have been working on a lot. And then since this buxe, the gulfos, uh, and gulfos is the um, this amazing river um, on Iceland. Uh, if you have been watching my podcast for a long time, you know that I have been to Iceland and seen gulfos. And it's a really amazing place and I believe the pants are inspired by uh, the river. And there's also a matching jacket, but I'm only knitting the pants for now. But uh, since I only had this, like, I had the working project, my, my Desert Rain uh, alpaca silk linen shawl, and then I had the braided pants, like the favorite working progress things, I thought that, hmm, the only thing I'm missing is uh, uh, a project with... Uh, like color, color work. So, and then there was a book release this uh, week and I got the book home uh, to my mailbox or postbox or what do you say? I got it in the mail to, the, to my home and when I was uh, like flipping through I found the perfect Color work project for me at the moment. So, this is uh, a Matthias Buxe. <laughs> if you, uh, as you can hear on the name, it's a Norwegian design. So, here is uh, how far I have gotten. I started this yesterday. So, it's ribbing and there's holes in the front for uh, a bow or something. So, you can take or just knit some eye cord and have uh, instead of elastics. So I'm going to sew this ribbing down uh, when I'm finished with knitting. Uh, and it's short rows so it's uh, higher in the back than in the front to have space for baby bottoms and diapers and things. So. Yeah, 
And then it's this triangle color work that I'm working on now. Oh, the bulldog is snoring. So yeah, working away on the triangle. So this is all from yesterday evening's knitting. I can't wait to knit more on this. Uh, so this is also Sunness yarn, Norwegian yarn. Uh, but this is the merino, so it's the thicker, uh, thicker quality. So this is 22 stitches to the 10 centimeters or 4 inches. So they have tin, which is 27 and stitches and per 4 inches, or and they have this that is the thicker one with 10, 22 uh, stitches to 4 inches. And I'm knitting this on 4 millimeter needles. And it's really nice to practice on uh, a little project that goes faster, like with all the floats I need to do. So there's some of the rows, like in the in the mm, when you when you swap from the longest of one color to the longest of the other, those two rows are too long for me, so I need to twist to not, not get so long floats and I need to practice on knitting evenly funny thing is that uh, when I'm knitting Icelandic sweaters which are, are quite big in circumference <coughs> sorry the color work is really easy to get even but then when I'm knitting small things uh, it gets a little bit uneven it's not so crazy so i think this will be good when it's blocked so yeah that's the the cast on from yesterday so it's my last work in progress and here is the colors so uh, merino wool so it's a purple and a dusty pink So yeah, that's all, all the works in progress, and I need a sip of water, and then I have had some uh, stash a lot, and maybe I should start with the book that I got. So this is unfortunately only Norwegian, so I won't talk too much about it since majority of you aren't fluent or speaking any Scandinavian language but if you're if you're fluent in Norwegian then it's really easy and if you were fluent in I probably Danish too and absolutely me since I'm Swedish I have no problem understanding or at least it's close enough so I can understand what I'm doing so the book is called Klompe Lompe Strik till hela familjen with my very Swedish accent. Uh, so they are two girls, or women I should say, uh, that design under the name Klompe Lompe. So they have their own coverways of yarn and stuff. And this is the second book. Uh, so it's mostly children's designs from tiny, tiny, let's see, from tiny baby things. Uh, like slippers to let's see I should have picked some beforehand cute sweaters and hats but then also and there's a cute hat but also there's some knits for for women as well and there was a really nice gentleman Sweater. Let's see if I can find it. That I was thinking about knitting for my fiance. Let's see if I can find it without you getting bored. Bored, bored. I should have put post-its in it like a proper podcaster do, but I forgot. And now I can't find it. They aren't like sectioned in in baby. Uh, women, men, but they are all mixed up uh, in in the book. 
Where is it? Oh, found it. That one. I think it would be really nice maybe in red or brown. My fiance's colors. So I said to him, oh, do you want me to knit this sweater for you? And he was like, yeah, I would rather have that you knit, finish the sweater you have started for me because I want that one first. Then we can talk about other things. But firstly, I want the one you have started. So maybe I should take the hint and actually knit on his sweater. But it's really hot to knit on this huge uh, male sweater in thick uh, tweed yarn. I have it in your lap when it's 30 degrees inside. So that's why I have all the baby knitting things popping up again. Uh, so the book was one of my stash a lot things. And then I tr have treated myself to some yarn. So some time ago I talked about in my podcast love uh, uh, section uh, when I talked about podcasts and I like and watch a lot and I mentioned uh, a French podcaster called Charlotte and Gus so it's Charlotte and her cute zippy tootsy kitten uh, called Gus uh, it was really cute because she always thought that uh, podcast with two hosts uh, like it looks sound, sounds better when you have two names so uh, her kitten is sitting in a cute woolen box while she podcasts so it's Charlotte and Gus and she designs pretty cool stuff and she also have been uh, starting to dye and started the Etsy shop and I couldn't resist so I have two skeins of yarn so she may have these hand written labels so she's based in Paris so I have this one and <laughs> I'm not good in French but it's a merino 100% uh, superwash merino and the colorway is purple radish so it's my perfect kind of purple mixed with some green speckles and a very very light very very washed out pale green base it's not white but it's a real really pale greenish yellow so this one is really amazing look at it oh I'm in love so but as you know if a poor little skein is going to travel all the way from Paris it needs a friend so this one had to be the company and this is uh, this is another base so this is a single ply this i don't know how many plies she named the purple purple radish is i think it's merinos nu or something so this is uh, a high twist one and this is uh, a single ply uh, so this is, I think it's quite washed out on my screen, but the colorway is named Bleached Fig. So if you imagine like the meaty parts of a fig, but bleached, it's exactly what uh, the label says. So it's really soft, 100% merino, but the single ply. So this will probably be some kind of shawl I think and it's 366 meters so it's a little bit less than, uh, than this because this is 425 but yeah really lovely yarns and I can't wait to knit something up maybe combining them I have been thinking about using them together I don't know what do you think do you have any suggestion what I can use them for? Uh, please. Just tell me in the dump bar or in the reverie group or send me a message on Instagram. What should I knit with these? They are so lovely. And they smell lovely too. 
So, since I'm on this yarn challenge diet, I don't have ordered. I haven't ordered yarn uh, that much yarn lately. I have been a good girl, but I have been buying fiber to compensate. So I have three new braids of fiber. They're all from uh, Free Waters Farm. It's an American company. And uh, so this is uh, a merino nylon. Uh, this is the summer jubilee. So this is Tour de Fleece 2016. So maybe I will manage to make a crazy pair of socks with it. My stupid little plan was to finish the fiber I had on the spinning wheel and then uh, participate in Tour de Fleece uh, and then spin this one. But I didn't even touch the old fiber on the spinning wheel, so I will save this up for later. And then I have this one. This one is called Supercell, so it's uh, a Rambouillet top. And Rambouillet is, if I remember correctly, it's like a merino, but it's French. You know, so it's quite soft and the colors are amazing. So I have quite a lot of fibers to spin uh, at the moment. And yeah, and then I have one braid from uh, from a Norwegian uh, wool dyer. Do you say that that way? Uh, I have never tried her before. She was new to me, I found her on Etsy, and she's called Ulliente, which is Wool Girl. And I got uh, this gorgeous braid. So this is uh, 21 micron uh, merino, springtime feelings. So it's, uh, it's one braid, it starts up here, so it goes from green to orange to purple so yeah this 100 grams so i'm really looking forward to try this too and see how uh, how the fiber is it's a really really tight braided so it's it looks a lot less than this but it's a lot more compact i believe so i'm really excited to try this out too so yeah yeah, and um, that's all, all the fiber goodness, I believe. And yeah, I have been doing quite a lot of other things uh, this month. The stupid thing was that I, I planned to record like the first week of July. Um, yeah, first week of July. Uh, I have. I wrote like uh, show notes. I, I write them by hand so I have them beside me so I can check so I don't forget anything. And I have picked all the things uh, out of my boxes and collected, like gathered all the project bags. And then I realized my fiance took the only working computer when he was uh, out traveling uh, without me. So then I stood there without any recording equipment. So that was a bummer. Uh, and then I figured I should record the weekend after. But then I traveled to my parents uh, for a weekend. Uh, so I traveled to Sweden to my parents and I had a really, really lovely time knitting and talking and playing with my baby cousin, or oh, she is two years, so not so little anymore, uh, but she is really, really fun to play with. So I hanged out a lot with her and I went to a concert uh, with my parents. My parents and my brother, uh, who also lives in Sweden, they had booked tickets for Sissi Top uh, in this very special concert hall, which is uh, an old 
an old mine do you say that uh, I'm not sure uh, it's it's not like a mine where you dig down deep in the ground but you uh, like you use all the material you use the materials that are at the surface or very close to the surface you dig this big hole to pick up uh, the things you need um, it's called dagbrott in uh, Swedish so where you have yeah the materials or the, the minerals or whatever you need are lying at the top surface you don't need to like dig very f far down in the ground so you have this big hole and this is an, one of these uh, that isn't in use anymore so it's this really 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 huge dump or huge hole in the ground in the mountain and with this big slope down on one side and then you have the concert uh, the scene is on a lake at the bottom it's a really really amazing place uh, but you're outside so you need to dress properly uh, but it's really really amazing I've been there before uh, on concerts and it's amazing and it was really fun to see this it up uh, it's uh, quite a nostalgia for me since I grew up with the music uh, and they they weren't like talking like weren't small talking much but they were like really playing the music and having a good time so we all had a good time that was there so that was really great and then I have been working I haven't had any proper vacation and I was sick one weekend when I was going to record um uh, I I have finally finally like found uh, a proper medication for my stomach problems. Uh they can't uh put a diagnosis on it because they can't find uh significant uh, proof for it, but I'm reacting really good to the medication. So the doctor says it's most likely to be uh, this disease called Crohn's. Uh, inflammatory disease in the bowel system so I have these periods when I get really sick and then I have periods when I'm quite okay and uh, I had to figure out like how to regulate uh, the medication for to get uh, a good room, a better situation for me so I'm I had one weekend when I was really bad and had a lot of pain and was really really bad so uh, I didn't record that weekend now when I have adjusted my medication I'm feeling better again um, so that was one weekend that like flown away and then like all day all, all the other days like when I get home from work me and my fiance have been wedding planning like crazy we have been away adjusting the the dress we have been buying shoes planning food planning rings and uh, like trying to book meetings with one person there and one person here so we have been like uh, flying around like crazy planning for the wedding so it's <laughs> it's really really close now guys uh, the 13th of August so it's two weeks less than two weeks so yeah i'm working <laughs> um, this is sunday i forgot to mention today uh so we're getting married uh saturday in two weeks uh so i am working this whole week and then i have a ordinary weekend which i hope to be able to record and then i will have one week off from work before my wedding so at least one episode I will be able to record. I'm hoping to be able to record that next next weekend because then I will be free but my parents and my mother-in-law and all our friends will be coming on like first day Friday and so we need to like show people how we live and that kind of stuff because it's not that many people that have been visiting us since we moved to Norway because it's it's a far travel and you need to plan it and it costs quite a lot of money for so 
not all our friends have been visiting here so it's really fun that so many of them will come uh, it's also a little bit nervous but it will be awesome so yeah two weeks to my wedding it's crazy uh, so that's probably why I'm a little bit stressed out and it's really nice that I've found time today to just sit down and talk to you I have been talking for forever and ever uh, my fiancés uh, have been kidnapped by his friends they drove all the way from Sweden it's like f from where they live it's like a five and a half hours of drive they drove up here on Friday and we played uh, board games and had a good time eating good food and then on Saturday morning early in the morning they kidnapped him out of bed I have packed a bag and they drove back to Sweden with him so I have been alone this weekend uh, which it's quite nice to be alone sometimes but it also gets boring but I am glad that I had some time to sit down and breathe and talk with you uh, so I hope you enjoyed seeing my new projects uh, if um, you have any comments about how I could improve or if you have any suggestions for what anything I could do with my new yarn or if there's anything you want to tell me please do so you can reach me on the YouTube channel you can reach me on Reverie I have a Reverie group called Shappy Pug Yarn and I'm Distortion on Instagram so if there's anything you want to tell me please do I'm really really happy when I get messages even even if it's just hey uh, I watch your podcast and I like it uh, and get some bubbly inside and yeah it's it's really nice and it's easier to feel like it's a dialogue so it's not just me uh, rambling for myself uh, yeah you see even the dogs are bored <laughs> Let's see if you can see them. They are so cute. Oh, project bag in the way. <laughs> so they are just laying there, being cute. So yeah, but I think that is all for this week. Um, I hope you have enjoyed watching this and that you will come back next week for hopefully a more regular uh, episode uh, where I get a little bit more used to talk with you again but I have missed it and I have been thinking about it every week that I want to record and I need to record so I hope I will get back to it now so hope you will have a really nice week take care bye